everybody and welcome back to Nihon no Nichiobi. Today I made gyoza. Now gyoza are actually originating from China, but the Japanese and Tafa really like them. And it's actually a very common Japanese dish. Um, they're, yes, I know. They're, I have a ton of different, you know, shapes and sizes and also a ton of different types of like doneness levels because, you know, learning curves but I just made a mess of my fingers but yeah so let's get cooking the first thing you're going to need is a half pound of ground pork um, I actually had to get a package of a pound of ground pork because it's not a very popular ingredient um, so you need that and you also need some sort of wrapper now ideally you need gyoza wrappers which are round. These are wonton wraps which are square. Um, it's the same ingredients so that's not really going to matter I don't think. Um, but the shape's just going to be a little different from the authentic gyoza. You'll also need a cup of minced cabbage. Um, they, this is Napa cabbage. The recipe specifically requests Napa cabbage but they also mentioned that if you can't get Napa cabbage any cabbage will work. Four to five green onions, very finely chopped. Garlic, you'll be using about one to two cloves. I'm going to be using two cloves because I love me some garlic. Soy sauce, sake, sesame oil, cornstarch, and oil to cook the gyoza in. And you'll also need just a little bit of water to help steam the gyoza once they're mostly cooked through. So the first thing we're gonna do is add all of the main ingredients into the bowl. So the first thing we're gonna add is the pork. A bit of come out, come in, dear. Um, garlic. Goodness gracious! It's like these ingredients don't want to be like cooked and eaten or something. Weird. Cabbage. That's a lot of cabbage. Green onions. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. One and two. The recipe says two tablespoons of soy sauce, but this is from the same people who told me too much soy sauce for ramen. Um, and for the most part, I prefer just a taste of soy sauce. I don't like it to be overwhelming. Like when I have sushi, I dip the smallest amount into soy sauce. So I'm just going to do one because that's just my preference. One tablespoon of soy sauce. One and a half tablespoons of sake. So I'm not gonna make it too exact. I'm just gonna fail. Okay, oh, that's gonna be more. That's more than one and a half. But you know what? I don't really care. And then one tablespoon of sesame oil. And then you just mix it all up until it's well combined. All right. So I have my pork all mixed up. Like I said, it's still kind of cabbage heavy, but you know we'll see. And these are our, our gyoza wrappers. They're really thin and they're like coated in flour. It kind of reminds me of like bubble gum because they're always covered in like powdered sugar. Um, anyway, the recipe says to take about a tablespoon of like the pork mixture and put it, eh, oh, that's not where that's supposed to go, in the center, sort of. And then it also says to wet the edges. So I put my water in a bowl here and I'm going to wet the edges of my wrapper. Hit, now my fingers wet. And let's just see how this goes. I'm not going to be folding it the way that it tells me to just because of the fact that it's like it's not round. Then. So I'm just going to turn them into little like square rectangular packages. Those are going to be my gyoza and maybe I'll seal the top. They're like really spongy. I mean I guess it is raw dough so I mean it would be like shapeable like play-doh. But yeah I'm not going to make them look super authentic because I'm not a super authentic kind of girl. Um, 
I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing at this point because I think the dough is fun. So yeah, I'm just gonna fill the rest of these with as much pork as I can, and then we're gonna cook them. So after folding about a million of these things, as you can see, I've decided that the best way that I like it is folding it like this with the squares. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how I, how I was doing that, which is like the last bit. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in the center and make it kind of um, oval shaped rather than um, circular so that it goes kind of across the center rather than just a dollop in the middle. And then I'm still going to wet all four edges with water. And then you're going to take the side that folded the, like across the direction that the uh, inside is going like so. And make sure you get everything inside. I probably put a little bit too much in this because I was I wanted to use as much of the remainder as I could. And then you just want to pinch the top. I was kind of holding it while I pinch it just so that it kind of seals. And then on the bottom, you'll notice that there's still like a hole. So you're going to poke the bottom up and then pinch it. So the way I would recommend doing that is poke the bottom of the hole with your pointer finger and while you're holding it, pinch it with your middle finger and your thumb. Like that, and then just kind of pinch all of the sealed edges so that it's sealed. So next you're going to want to heat up a, a large skillet, you know, for the size of how many gyoza you have over like medium high heat with some of the uh, vegetable oil in it. And I'm just going to kind of lower them in. It doesn't need to like fry or anything. I think the purpose of the oil is just to, um, to brown the bottoms. And you don't want to get too impatient with it either because then you'll burn them. And I'm just going to line them up. Okay. All right. Relax. I'm just going to line them up because that's what they did on the video that I watched for the recipe. All right, I don't know why it's popping like it is, but I'm not a fan of it. Ah! Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it over here where the oil is not cooking. I'm gonna put them in. The problem too is like my oven, my stove top is like kind of shitty. So like it's slanted. <laughs> it, uh, so the oil always goes to like one side, which is really frustrating. And that's pretty common with everything that we cook, that everything goes to one side. And it's really super frustrating when you're trying to like keep things in a certain spot. So I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna put these all in, is how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna put these in, and then once they're all in, I'm going to kind of swirl the pan around like I will do right now because they're all in. I'm just gonna kind of like swirl the pan around so that I know that the oil gets to the bottom of all of them so that it will brown them. And then I'm gonna put it back on the heat, and then we're going to wait until, <laughs> hello topper. And then once the bottoms are golden brown, then we're going to add water, supposedly. All right, so these are browning on the bottom nicely. You can kind of see that one. I don't think they're gonna get much crispier or darker than that, because I think I may have added just a touch too much oil. All right, relax, relax. So here's the dangerous part, because I added too much oil. All right, all right, I hear you. Jeez. Um, because we added too much oil, We need to add water to this to kind of steam the dumplings through. So what I'm gonna do is I took it off the heat. I'm gonna put this on first. Whew. And then I think I'm gonna use the rubber one because I'll have a better grip on it. Use the rubber mitt. And I'm going to just open a little bit and pour it in there. Now, luckily there's more there's more water than there is oil, so it's probably not gonna splash too much. But, and then you just kinda leave it there, and I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, 
and you're just going to leave it there until the water boils off and kind of gets sucked into the gyoza so it'll be nice and moist and hopefully our pork will be cooked because raw pork's no fun for anybody. Alright, so I think that our gyoza are all cooked and I gotta say, they actually smell really tasty. Um, I did turn the heat off, this is just any excess, it's kind of boiling away. Like I said, I think there was a bit too much oil, so that might just hang out there. So I'm just going to try to like scoop these up and put them on the plate. Oh, these bottoms though, look at that. Well, whatever. Oh my god, they're all sticking together. Like they're one, they're like the gyoza centipede here. Well, this is not going to be as pretty as I was hoping it would be. We're just going to scoop. Oh my god. So definitely too much oil, but if that's the only thing that went wrong, other than a few burnt bottoms, then I'm okay with it. But we won't really know until we taste them. Alright, so here I am in the same exact pose that I ended the intro in with Copper still here with his uh, hand on my elbow saying, Mom, I need those. And Mom, I need to attend P-L-A-Y time at the P-A-R-K. And Mom, I'm going to kick the tripod. About that? Come over here. Can you sit? So I'm just going to kind of dive in right now. Um, now this sauce right here is called Potsticker Gyoza Dipping Sauce. Now the recipe that I got these from does have a recipe for potsticker sauce, but I'm lazy, especially after like assembling and cooking these things. I don't feel like doing it. But it's not coming out. I have to like do it like this, like hot sauce interesting I don't necessarily understand this bottle or the physics behind it or the reasoning behind the physics of it but you know what still better than making my own sauce so I also don't have chopsticks I went to the grocery store and was getting all of my supplies I went to like the sushi place and I was like hi do you have chopsticks and they're like no we're out I'm like how are you the sushi area and you don't have chopsticks ridiculous so we're gonna go American here and use a fork. So the first thing I'm gonna eat, let's just get it over with and eat the crispy bottom one. Cause really, if this is good, it can only go up from here. So I'm just gonna dip a little bit in. Yeah, the bottom is not soft. The top is still kind of soft though. So let's see, I did check the temperature on a couple of them and it did say that my pork was cooked. So fingers crossed, huh? Actually, yeah, mm, well, I'm, I'm gonna cut this one open just to verify. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we're good. We're cooked. So yeah, I'm gonna dip this and give it a shot. So overall, not too bad. I think the burnt bottom kind of is a little iffy for me because it's like burnt oil. Um, so I'm gonna try this one that's only about halfway kind of burnt, but not really burnt at all. And I'm not gonna use a dipping sauce, I just wanna taste it for what it is. So it's pretty good. Um, for this circumstance, I would probably say that it could use a little bit more soy sauce, because um, the meat's not very salty. Um, but I also did use the reduced sodium uh, soy sauce, so maybe I should have used the full order of soy sauce and then um, also maybe added some salt. The other thing too is I'm finding that I don't like an overing, overing, an overpowering flavor of sesame. Because there's quite a bit of sesame oil in this, um, not quite a bit, but I can taste it. And I think I should have cut that in half a little bit because I don't really, I don't mind sesame oil, but I kind of like it as a background flavor to kind of add to the depth of the dish rather than tasting the sesame oil, I'm finding. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try this one that basically is not burned at all on the bottom. The bottom actually of this one might be a little underdone. I don't think the meat will be underdone, but I kind of think that the bottom should be a little bit more brown, but we'll see. Okay, so yeah, definitely too, too, definitely too much sesame oil. That, like, that bite was really strong. So what I'm actually gonna do 
because I'm going to fill this up with soy sauce and see how I like it with soy sauce as well. All right, so I finished up this bottle of sesame sauce, sesame sauce, soy sauce, but don't worry, I have a larger bottle in the fridge. So let's try this one because the bottom is once again not that burnt. So we're just gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna dip it in the soy sauce. I'm being a little bit liberal with it just because I did note earlier that it could use some more soy sauce and less sesame oil. It's much better with soy sauce. Still a little bit too much sesame oil, but I think the soy sauce kind of overpowers it a little bit. So overall, it's not a bad recipe. I think um, I think making it was like, like if I was being graded on it, like from like an A, B, C, D, E fail standpoint, I think I'd pass. Um, as in following the recipe. I think I might, I might get like a C on it, but I don't think I'd fail it because the meat's cooked, the, the top part of it is tender, and there were some that weren't burnt. Um, but the recipe itself I think needs a little bit of tweaking, but that's kind of something that you don't really know until you try it because you won't know what you like in the recipe that you're making until you do it. Um, the only other thing too is this makes a lot of gyoza and I'm probably going to be wasting a lot of food because I'm probably going to have to throw out some of the burnt ones because it's just it's just burnt oil and it doesn't taste good. But I think with a little bit of practice um, it can be a successful recipe and it'll get easier as you go. Uh, but yeah, so if you've ever made these let me know um, if there's like a trick to it. Um, I think the trick is also not adding too much oil to the pan. I mean, what are you gonna do? Um, not add enough, not add too much oil. That's what you're gonna do, Becca, huh? Is that what you're saying? Mama, don't add too much oil. But yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm gonna try to get into a little bit more challenging recipes. I was thinking about doing an oyakodon, which is like an egg, chicken, onion, egg, apparently <laughs> there's two eggs, um, over rice bowl. But I've been doing a lot of egg things, and that's very easy. Um, but I'm gonna try to start challenging myself because then I feel like I'm gonna mess up more, and it's gonna be more entertaining for you folks that are watching. Um, but yeah, so thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.